Hello, everybody. Name's Arise. A lot of people call me Omi, different things. Um, today, I want to talk about being bipolar. Um, it is something that a lot of people are dealing with, and a lot of people don't know that they're dealing with it because, you know, sometimes people don't want to talk about it because of the stigmas and the, um, just the things that are associated with being bipolar. It's not always something that people refer to in a good way. Um, some of the prejudices that we face are being crazy, you know. Most of it's really dismissive uh, stuff that people say about it. So I want to address that today, you know, because sometimes I can be a certain way one day and another way another day. And that's part of what's called being a rapid cycle. You know, before I did the, the live with Kilo and Glitz, I did not know that there were a lot of rapid cyclers. I never even heard of this shit until they told me I was a rapid cycler. Well, what the fuck does rapid cycle mean? I guess normally, and uh, most, or in some bipolar people, you can go through months and months of depression, and then you can have moments of being hypomanic or manic. Whereas a rapid cycler, depending on if they're bipolar type one or type two, could cycle through these emotions in a matter of minutes. It could be days. It, it, it varies. It varies. The, the thing that makes a rapid cycling is it's faster than most. Now, I'm what you would consider bipolar, too. Um, schizoaffective, which means you can hear or see things, but you're not completely schizo. Um, I have PTSD, and I'm OCD as well as diagnosed very young with what they call then hyperactive disorder, but is now known as ADHD. So I've been dealing with a lot of these different mental afflictions if you would say if you want to call them that since i was you know young so you know i did the therapy thing which worked it worked being able to talk to somebody who is willing to listen to you and not judge you is a wonderful thing but what helped more than anything was finding other people like myself and i really enjoy talking to other people who are going through it because Sometimes, man, I really feel like I'm the only one going through this, you know, this type of mental affliction, and I'm not. So, all you guys out there that are dealing with bipolar, and and for those of you who are dealing with people who are bipolar, this is a message to those who are bipolar. Understand that some people are not equipped mentally to deal with it. It's not that they don't care about you. And it may seem that way with the things that they say, but the thing is, they're just not equipped. And although it doesn't change the fact that we need someone in those moments of, to support us, they're just not equipped to do it. So, you know, it can strain a relationship. It can strain relationships with your spouse. It can strain relationships with your children. It can strain work relationships. I mean, I've had my fair share of, you know, the different things that have been due to the disorder. One of the things I don't like that some health officials will say is that this is an incurable disease. It's an imbalance. It's a chemical imbalance. And to me, it's more the way life is now. And sometimes I just feel trapped. You know, I don't know if anybody else out there feels the same way, but sometimes I just feel trapped in myself. Like, I just don't feel like I can get out of my own way. Or, you know, like when, it's, when I'm really depressed, and it's not that I feel suicidal when I get depressed. I don't. In fact, sometimes I feel more normal when I'm depressed than when I'm not. But I'm not as creative when I'm depressed. I'm not as motivated when I'm depressed. Um, productivity suffers tremendously. It, 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 it weighs on your health. Like, you really do start to develop issues when you're just depressed and you don't care anymore. And on the other side of it... Being hypomanic and manic are good to a certain degree. Think of it like this. You have this superhuman energy, right? Like, it's just out there. You're freaking raring to go. And your brain is firing on every neurap, neuron synapse. is just bum, 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 going. Like, you have ideas out the ass. You cannot be stopped. You can't sleep in that energy. At first, it's like, woof, 
And then after a while, you realize it's like falling through the air without a parachute. That's the only way I can describe it. And um, before I did the live show with, with Kilo and Melissa, that's where I was. I was in free fall. I was fucking just going. And the worst thing about it is you know you're going to crash. You just don't know when and how bad and how much damage is going to be done, you know, before that happens. I don't know about other bipolar people, but I know me personally. Money and me, not a good mix. Not that I spend my money irresponsibly. But when I am manic, I am very impulsive. I will spend it on whatever I feel like spending it on. And sometimes that's just stupid shit. Not necessarily anything bad, just stupid shit. But I mean, we can't touch on the nice side of bipolar without touching on the dark side of bipolar. And the dark side of bipolar is the process of self-medicating. And I say that because it takes time to really understand the disease or the affection or, you know, whatever you want to call it, the, 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 the disorder. It takes time for you to yourself to understand how it affects you. It takes time for you to yourself to, to figure out the triggers that may send you spiraling downward or send you spiraling upward. And, you know, some people will do prescription medications. I was on prescription medications for three and a half years, several different ones. And they all, I mean, to the to healthcare professionals, to not maybe wanting to be up and down or psychotic or whatever they want to call it, then yeah, I guess the medication worked. But at the toll of health issues that came up, bad ones, you know, you would end up with night terrors or a, a freaking rash that could kill you. Um, I don't know if anybody's been on Risperidone, but... The night terrors and the effect to your sexual drive is one that if you have a spouse who is thinking you're going to get better by taking this medication and then you lose that aspect of it. So it's like it's it's like you're putting a rock between a hard place several times because it's like they want you better. But then what do they lose for? I remember when I was taking, I think it was called Zyprexa. I gained literally 20 pounds within two weeks, and it was ridiculous. Like, one of my own cousins didn't even recognize me because they're like, what the fuck happened to you, man? You're just like, you're fat. I'm like, I know. Me, fat. I've always been skinny my entire life. And I'm skinny now, so I'm happy that I'm back to my normal self. But, like I said, it was a up and down roller coaster trying to get these medications right. And then, you know, you would feel better, so you'd be like, you know what? I don't need the medication. And you forget that they tell you that these medications take a time to build up in your system. Some you build the tolerance to, some you don't. It's, it's hit or miss. It's really hit or miss. And you end up thinking you're fine. It's like, ah, I don't need these medications. And you just stop. Well, I just stopped. And that was one of the worst times I can remember in my life dealing with being bipolar was when I stopped my medication almost six years ago. And it was, it was bad. It was bad, man. It was terrible. For a little while, I didn't know, you know, I just didn't know anything. My brain was not firing properly. I would hallucinate. I would see people that weren't there. I would hear things that wasn't happening. I got really paranoid for a little while. Then I would get extremely depressed. And these things were just changing, like, you know, I used to describe it to my therapist is like, imagine like being in my mind is like being in a room, uh, an enclosed room that's got, it's like a dome and there's individual screens that make up this dome, but it looks like a flat surface and they start flashing, like they start playing different things. And all of these things are something that you want to pay attention to. So you try to, or at least I try to pay attention to all of them, and I'm just like going all over the place. So sometimes people will say to me, oh, you're all over the place. Yeah, in my head I am. So sometimes it, 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 it spills out into my actions in the world, and I look like a complete and total crazy person. But I'm not crazy. I'm just different. Just like a lot of you out there are just different. We're not crazy. We just are different. We're wired different. It's like a Honda and a Toyota. One's not crazy or pieces of shit. They're just two different fucking cars. So I'm just a different kind of car. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> I am a bipolar to rapid cycler. And until I realized that there was a lot more of us out there, I'm not going to say I was ashamed of it, but I was not 
as quick to say it on such a public forum that yes i am because like i said the stigma it's always the stigma and it's the stigma that stops us from getting the help that we need because we don't want to be put into a box we already feel isolated as it is because of the thoughts we have in our own head we isolate ourselves but then when you seek help or you start talking about it and other people start putting you into a box themselves and it's like you don't know who to trust you want to trust then you become isolated and distant and you develop other mental issues because of it so i'm saying this now to anybody who may feel like they are dealing with something like that don't shut everyone out find those people who are going to support you and listen you know listen to you but also remember not to unload too much too fast because some people can't like i said people are not equipped to deal with this like we are you know we're the ones who are going through it so we understand it a lot better than everybody else another thing i want to say is for anybody who is dealing with someone who is bipolar please for the love of god please do not go on some forum somewhere and listen to a bunch of other people like yourself complain about it and then based on the things that they've said, try to form some type of treatment regimen for your spouse. You're listening to people who don't know what the fuck they're talking about. You're listening to people who are complaining about dealing with it and how you should insulate and protect yourself. If you don't want to be around a bipolar person, simply do yourself and them the biggest favor of leaving them alone. Don't give them this false hope that you care. That's wrong. That's terrible and that's mean and it's more fucked up than the asshole who just calls me crazy to my face. All right? And like I said, I don't know if anybody's been through that. I'm going to assume that of the millions of other people who are probably like myself that you may or may not have dealt with something of that nature. Um, give me a second here. I'm going to have a quick sip of my Nesquik in my honey jar. Because there's a little bit of raw honey left in here. And when it mixes with the Nestle Cocoa, the Nesquik, honey chocolate, <clears throat> so good. Now back to being bipolar. One thing that I have loved about being bipolar is the energy. Is the freaking fact that my brain flies farther than I ever wanted to. And it sees these things and it wants to create them. So I, I do music, I do drawings, I paint, I design t-shirts, I make hot sauce. I just do whatever my mind says, hey, buddy, let's do something. Like, not fucked up or detrimental to our health. Let us do something. So I try to keep myself busy with projects of any kind. Creative ones. Whenever I get to, like, portray what I feel or hear in my mind onto some media that can be then saw or heard or touched by someone else or tasted by someone else. So to all the bipolar people out there, I say, keep your head high. Don't let anybody knock you down because there's going to be people that are going to, people knock down people all day. And the thing is, they give us a label so it's easier to knock us down. But if you ever look up bipolar people in movies or bipolar people in writers and bipolar people in, in different things, we're all over the place. We write a lot of the movies that these people love to watch. We make the shows. We draw the pictures. We produce the, the TV shows and, and the cartoons and the foods. And you know how many freaking bipolar chefs there are out there? I mean, Jesus fucking Christ, man. And I'm just saying, you got to look. You wonder why somebody who you think is so fucking happy one day just offs themselves. Well, when you have to hide who you are to prove to be a part of a society that no matter how great you are, if you told them what you are, they automatically disown you rather than say, hey. We should probably look at these types of people a totally different way rather than looking at them as if there's some type of problem or burden. Not all bipolar people are going to fucking spaz out, shoot up a building, and then kill themselves. That, that is not... That's not how I feel. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to blow up buildings and shoot a bunch of people and then kill myself. If you guys push me to the limit of wanting to kill a whole bunch of people, I'm going to want to kill a whole bunch of people. But guess what? I don't want to kill anybody. I just want to enjoy being me. 
And I want other people, if they don't enjoy me being me, to just keep it to yourself. You don't have to like me. You don't have to like what I'm doing. But you know what? The fact that anybody would waste energy to come out and trash anyone who's going through anything mental, any bipolar person who's ever had that happen to them, oh, he's just he's just crazy. He's, oh, he, you, you know, the worst thing is when you're really going through something and you try to talk to people and they're like, oh, he's bipolar. You never know what the fuck's coming out of his mouth. <laughs> it's like, I'm trying to tell you what's coming out of my mouth. I'm, I'm trying to explain it. You just dismissed it as I'm bipolar. So when is when should I be paid attention to? When I'm normal? When I'm not normal? And when I'm bipolar? Because as far as you guys are concerned, once I'm bipolar, I'm always bipolar. But guess what? I'm bipolar and motherfucking proud of that. And one thing that I want to say is, you know, in certain communities, certain ethnic backgrounds, certain cultures, admission of psychological damage is just not heard of. There is no such thing as bipolar. There is no such thing as this. You've got the devil in you or a demon has possessed you. God knows what they fucking do to people who they think are possessed with demons. We know what they did when they thought women were witches. We don't need that. And bipolar people went through a witch hunt for a short period of time. And I say this because across the nation, and this is a fact, for anyone who doesn't like it, look up the name Tyshawn Napoleon. Tyshawn Napoleon was a friend of mine. I went to freaking grade school and high school with him. And I didn't see him after we graduated. Never knew the kid was fucking bipolar in my life. Just remember one day he told his mom, he said, Mom, you know, he's feeling good. He came off the medication. It's like, Mom, you know, it, something's wrong. You know, he was hearing the voices that you start to hear when you come off these medications because they're fucking your head up in the first place. And, you know, he just was off. And his mom, out of concern for her son, called the police department. And said, you know, my son is having a bad mental day. I believe he may have a gun. I don't think he wants to hurt anyone. I am afraid for his life. Those were her words. I'm sorry to bring this up, Mrs. Napoleon, but I feel that this is very necessary for people to understand just how dire it can be for a person who's bipolar. Now, when the police, who she had explained what was wrong with him, arrived, it just so happened that the gentleman... Tyshawn Napoleon was walking across a uh, street, and um, he came into a schoolyard. He was armed. He didn't point the gun at anybody. He didn't threaten to shoot anybody with the gun, but they killed him. To make a long story short, they shot him dead on school property, and there are probably little 12-year-olds 12, 12 and shit that's seen this, but that's life here, you know? That's life for some people who are bipolar and and lose it. So, in memory of Tyson Napoleon, let us all be a little bit more careful about how we treat that guy that we say is bipolar, or that person we say is off. Don't don't keep putting them in the corner. We're already in the corner enough as it is, man. We want to come out, you know, and we want to be treated as like anybody else wants to be treated. We don't want to be, you know, discriminated against because. We're bipolar. And I don't tell all these that they don't touch. Yes, we are discriminated against. Okay, once people know they don't want you around because, oh, if we fire this guy, he might go postal. <sighs> Case in point, I lost my job. And I'm going to say the name of it. I don't care. Y'all can come up here and say what you want and say you didn't fire me for that reason. I had a, uh, I was working two jobs, one at Salvation Army and one at uh, UPS. So I didn't get much sleep. I'd leave one job, go to the other job. And I was working seven days a week. One day I was tired, driving home, got into a severe car accident, car got totaled. Luckily I had passed out at the wheel, so I wasn't majorly injured, but, you know, injured nonetheless. So I came back to work pretty much the next day, but they told me I couldn't work because I had a note that said I wasn't supposed to be in here in two days. And I'm just like, I'm not really all that fucked up. It's not like I broke legs and limbs. Let me go back to work. They said no. So with that being said, um, they found out from a coworker that I was on medication. Now, I didn't take my medication at work because I was a forklift operator and I was like foreman. I ran a lot of big, huge machines like giant balers and crushers and compactors and shit. So I couldn't take my medication at work. So I didn't. But they found out I was on medication. So what they decided to do was fire me. 
And when they fired me, they tried to say I was unsafe and all this other shit. And they tried to bring up all this footage. They was like, oh, we have eight hours of you driving recklessly with the forklift. I'm like, yeah, sure you do. You know, I said, number one, I could sue you. Because anybody being taken action against because of a medical condition they have, which shouldn't have been disclosed to any of you in the first place, is a violation of the HIPAA Act. But, you know what? I said, fuck it. Why do I want to be a place where people are going to be looking at me like I'm some kind of fucking psycho anyway? But here's the kicker. When I was asked to leave the property, I was told, warned specifically, hey, don't try to come back here and do anything stupid. We have cameras. Now, if you are right in firing me, and I've never exhibited any behavior to make you think that I would do something like that since I was a fucking supervisor, why in God's name when you find out I'm bipolar do you have to make a warning to me to say, don't come back here and do anything stupid? Do you understand what I'm saying? You see the anger I'm feeling? It makes me almost as angry as the day this piece of shit said it to me and I wanted to tear his fucking face off. But just his face, because he said some ignorant shit. But I digress, because I don't want to get angry. This is not what this talk was about. This talk was just to bring about how bipolar disorder affects many of us in a way that can be harmful. But I am here to say, if you are a bipolar bandit, that's right, I'm giving us a fucking name. If you're a bipolar bandit, like myself find strength in what makes you who you are because you're probably creative as fuck you probably have some talent that somebody's been telling you to keep quiet and bury just because they don't have it so if you could draw or dance or sing or rhyme or write or make music or draw or paint or fucking fly through the sky do it all right do it. I want to leave y'all with a song. Um, it's a beat I made. It's called The Sorrow of Self-Realization. Uh, I did a video previous, like a couple of, I think it was about a month ago, called The Sorrow of, Sor Sorrow of Self-Realization. This was one of, the, one of the beats I made when I was in uh, one of my depressed states. So I'm going to play this song. I'm going to let it take us out. And um, thank you all for listening. I'd like to make this a regular thing sort of like a support group for the bipolar people, I would like to do it live as well so we can all talk to each other and support each other. Um, so if you want to discuss any mental disorder, because we're all in this together, man. Schizos, the depressed, the ones with personality disorder, which, you know, I, I listen to what people say, these other support forums about people with personality disorders, and they, they just say, leave them alone, get the fuck far away from them as you can. And I refuse to believe that anyone is beyond help. We're not beyond help. So with that being said, thank you all for listening to me, Omen G, on today's topic of being bipolar. And to all my bipolar bandits, keep your heads up and just keep trucking. You ain't alone. I got your back. Come chill with me if you ever feeling down. We, we good. All right? So thank you for joining me, and I'm just going to let the song play and I'm gonna just let it go up.
if you have any friends out there that are going through it, you haven't talked to them in a while, you haven't, they haven't communicated with you in a while, send them a text, send them a post, send them a DM, send them an email, give them a call, stop by if they live close by, just check on your people, don't, don't let anybody suffer alone, don't suffer The whole point of coming together is to come together and bring each other up. You know what I'm saying? So, once again, this has been being bipolar with only shit. Bipolar bandits unite.